Hello everyone, and welcome to my General Hospital News YouTube channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribers button and give this video a thumbs up. Since Finn fell off the cart and seems likely to stay off of it, Liz has tried to support her swain every way that she knows how. But she's also been down this road with another addict Lucky. You'll recall that after the Bobby was injured on the job, he came addicted to anodynes and got caught up in a downcast curl that set up him having an affair with Maxie. Before the term against redemption, no way would Liz ever want to endure that kind of pain again. So rather than subject herself and, by extension, her kitties to it, she's likely to cut and run. She'll still be there for Finn. Of course, that's just who she is. She just wouldn't risk her Harley. Broken heart on commodity as changeable as his recovery. Splitting from Finn might hurt Liz, but it'll acceleration suckers of both stagers. Finn and Anna, they were into. Liz and Jason, for sure. But Finn and Liz, not so important. I really do like both actors. The pens haven't written for Finn and Liz like they should for Twitter carriage. They would be good as musketeers, but Liz needs to be with Jason and be in a story. Finn needs to work on himself for a while. The time has come to end the hostage extremity. Bladded just Jackie. Free Liz. On June 4, after General Hospital posted an exercise in which Finn mansplained to his significant other that he was not an alcoholic, me. Some observers allowed that the end had formerly come and gone. Elizabeth knows he's lying. This isn't her first time hearkening to an addict sling their sincere dependence recent Vitas, noted P.J. Rosiwa. That being said, Liz and Finn are over. You could just feel it in that clinch and kiss. Great job, Becky and Matol. However, we've a feeling that the appearance in Port Charles of this character and the ruinous twist that they bring will do the trick. If Finn's worsening dependence is nin enough to beget Liz to run for the hills, as the break up hurries down the pike, check out the below print gallery that climbs the branches of Finn and Chase's family tree. So it's nearly pointless that Scotty's son Karen Wexler decomposed in an auto accident on General Hospital Derivation Port Charles back in 2003. Still, she could do so in a twinkle. If the power said be wanted her to follow Jason out of the grave. What's more, they could bring back Carrie Shane, the actress who began the part. I heard they are talking about Karen a lot. She tells Soapub, adding, we all know what being in an auto crash means. I suppose I would be open to returning, where the show would choose to give the ill-fated character a new parcel on life. It might make sense. When Shane left the part after only two times, indeed, she didn't realize how the job had impacted her internal health. While playing Jagger's John Squeeze, who Sonny induced to strip at his cafe, I was going through a breakdown, and I didn't know it, she said during a 2023 occasion of state of mind. The character had gotten to me so much. It really affected me. I was so much a method actor, too. She went on. The plot was each so heavy and dark and awful. And to get to that place, I had to live there all the time, I suppose that's why I left, because I couldn't live that way. Post-General Hospital, Shane took a break from showbiz and came a labor and delivery nanny. The career change also had a nice side benefit. She says, it allowed me to be at home while I was raising my kitties. On Friday, Jake overpraised the details of how he witnessed Finn drinking at a dive bar with another woman. While he bothered about telling his mama the news, Elizabeth was glad she did. Incontinently, she headed over to Finn's, and rather of knocking on the door, she used her key and spotted Finn and said other woman on the settee, an empty bottle of bourbon in front of them. Picking up on Monday, Elizabeth faces a distrait Finn, who must answer for his treason. Dispensable to say, Elizabeth is left reeling. Is this the straw that breaks the camel's back? 
Aunt Elizabeth and Hamilton eventually finished. Drew is formerly getting a taste of what it's like to be on the crusade trail because he's going person. Tell person to tell his musketeers about his intentions to run for Congress. Obviously, he tells Curtis right down because this could affect the business they're about to make. Will Curtis, unborn health and hardiness practitioner, support his bro while he goes for gold in Washington, D.C.? In other news, Tracy Quartermain offers wise counsel. There are a lot of folks in and out of the Quartermain mansion who could use some good advice. Who finds themselves on the business end of Tracy's wise words? Chase and Brooklyn are solid campaigners. They've a monumental task ahead of them, and that's helping Finn. Changes of heart, Willow, and Michael leave the kiddies at home in favor of date night. Unfortunately for Michael, He'll have to hear to Willow Bandy Nina. Formerly again, she thinks that if Drew, of all people, can find a way to attend with Nina, it's possible she could too. How will Mikkel respond? Finally, Nina is redefining effects in her life and reassessing everything since she hit gemstone bottom. Effects are looking up, but she finds herself suddenly having a change of heart. What about... Over the course of the last time, General Hospital has thrown some major changes at Nina. Her marriage to Sonny went belly up. Her fellowship with Ava went kaput. And formerly again, Sun Willow wanted nothing to do with her. So, I am mourning not being suitable to see my musketeers presently. Cynthia Watros tells first for women. Indeed, though it's just words on a runner and you're playing a character, I miss working with them. When I see Maurice, Bennard, and Mora, Wes, on a completely different set, I am like, I wonder what they are doing over there. And I do not get to see Katie, Macmillan, a whole lot, and I just love her so much. Luckily, General Hospital was dished out with the old, it was in with the new, meaning that Nina is now netted in a fiery affair with Cameron Matheson's Drew. They occasionally tell you you are going to have a love scene which means student go to McDonald's for a while. Watro says, So Frank sweetly let me know, and I allowed, Oh, I guess Sonny and Nina get back together. But also a little voice was like, You better textbook back with who. When the Emmy winner set up out that Nina would be getting jiggy with Drew, who she got transferred to captivity for bigwig trading, she was stupefied. At first, I was like, How's this gonna work? she admits. But I trust Frank, the pens and the process. And as we were shooting it, I was like, oh, this really is gone to work. Indeed, if it doesn't in the long term. What I liked about it's that Nina got her sexy reverse. She might not watch for his personality a whole lot, but whether you liked it or not, she does find Drew veritably seductive. Maybe as Nina gets to know him more, she could find further effects than his abs and biceps that she likes about him. You know I know. Watra says, I am just having a great time, whatever we together. Because Nina's has no way had a relationship like this. I mean, she's downright rude to Drew occasionally, and they are veritably raw with each other. I love it. Thanks for watching if you like this video. So please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any updates.